Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah, Lili Nishmasi Mimirosi Rus Bas Mordechai. I want to start off with a big chizuk here. Hi, Rebelli. I was at the CM and Belt Works and loved the achtos and camaraderie and was inspired to arrange a weekly get together for the guys in Montreal. Tonight was the first one of many. Mir Hashem Chaim Shuk D13. You can see the uh, radio on the table. Why is this a chizuk? Because these are guys who are getting together to learn Torah, to get to know each other, to take it out of the screen. It's not just a sheer online sheer. It's camaraderie. It's mishpacha and Maybe they learned something from this one right over here. Oy vey. This was... Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, the picture, I ruined it somehow. But you get the idea. This is in Muncie. There's like 13 people here. It also started with five guys. And this is uh, Mo Landy. We were talking about Mo Landy yesterday after Shachris. Um, a guy, the Davin's here with us. He took a picture of him, saw him in Kennedy learning. And it turns out that he learned the whole Masechus Megillah or Tainus on the flight. And me just saying over that story inspired many other people. And here again, another thing from Olandi. He did this thing, this Thursday night, get together other people. That's why you mefire some of these things for Taira. <coughs> a boy say, it says on the bottom over here, the boys in camp arise from Plano, Texas. Texas. Start off each day in the same as thousands of London across the world, connecting to the worldwide movement of Ellie Stefanski. This is MKY status. Check this out. Texas. Nochamal? Texas, Nochamal. Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Okay. And now here it goes. Another camp by Yiddy Schwartz. Here are some videos to enjoy. One way the day after the scene of Bellworks, my son wore the MDY gear and said, Good Shabbos, Rabbi Sai. Ah. The other video is the video of one of my morning classes in camp. You did him saying, Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Let the Oilam enjoy this amazing video. These are the Chav is looking forward to bring on live tonight. Whatever that means. He's also going to do something live. Here we go, another camp you did him. It takes practice, it takes practice. <laughs> this was amazing. I didn't have to see me, it took me twice to read this. In yesterday's shir, he spoke about being careful with kosher meat. The story of the Messias Nefesh of our great grandfather, Yankiv Stefanski, came to mind. So he sent me this whole booklet about my great grandfather. I didn't have a chance to read it because I got it this morning. But maybe he's talking about, I don't know. There's a story I'll say real quickly. My grandfather, Yankiv Stefanski from Switzerland, my great grandfather, he was a uh, mashgiach in, in the butcher shop. So he came in one day and he saw that, he saw something he didn't like about the meat. So he told the guy, you can't sell it. The guy says, I'm going to sell it. So he stood by the door and every client that walked in, he says, Dao for Kaufman Treif. Over here they sell Treif. So, and everybody just turned away. So the owner of the store, the butcher, took out a giant knife and came running at him and he said, listen, you're going to go, otherwise I'll kill you. So what does Stefanski do? He pulled out a knife. He says, if you chosh it on tray, if you chosh it on a tzicha, I'm prepared. Let's go. And he kept on standing there. But I don't know if that's the story. But listen to how he, he closes the story off. Thank you for the outstanding shirim, especially Yavama said, help me understand how I'm your cousin. From your Lubavitcher cousin, Bar Shalim Shwey. You hear this? I have a little Babacha cousin. So I know about this mishpacha. I think, if I'm not mistaken, his father or somebody, there's a tremendous, tremendous Tamad Chachem, Shway in Lubavitch. So here we go. I'm meeting up with my cousin, finally. Shkoyach. I would like to thank you and the entire MDY Kihilo for the warm welcome during my pilot trip last week. Most people only get to see the back of the heads of the MDY Hebra, but it's really nice to get to meet the supporting cast in person. There are some colorful characters there that definitely deserve more airtime. A special thank you to Avi Kamiansky for taking the week off so I had a front row seat. I truly hope to make Aliyah and become a regular member. But Karayev, thanks for the yes, David Stern. And finally, hi Rebelli. In recovery room after surgery, Baruch Hashem, listening to the daf. Lule Tairos Choshashuai. The Tairos Shashuai. Tairos keeping him going. 
Please be mispal for me. Betoch kol choyli Yisrael. Thanks. Good Shabbos. Shlemi Miller. Shabbos should give you a refuel shleima. And this is Dimitri Michaelads, something like that. Learning. Oh, that's his son, Dimitri's son. Oh, and finally, I have been spending time in the USA, but trying to keep up with the daf. This is by David Black from RBS. In the picture, I'm attending the World Games in Birmingham, Alabama. Learning Torah in Birmingham, Alabama. Here I am waiting for my daughter's Muay Thai championship fight. So in the meantime, I'm learning the daf while other fights are going on. By the way, my daughter came away with silver medal. Go Team Israel. The month's koilo sponsored the Nishmas Chayyim Moshe. The Masechta is sponsored by the Nishmas Moshe Alosa Ben Nata Shalom and the Ili Nishmas is borrowed by Moshe Aaron and for that slacha b'cholang yonim for my children. The second part is a Masechta. Jeff Rosner and Schus my son Yosef Simcha Chayyim Ben Sora Chana Rufu Shleima. And what a Masechta this is, Rabbi. You know, every day you hear no am. Yeah. What's unbelievable? Silver medal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The Masech, the Shaita, get out! <laughs> Pay attention to every word here. The Masech, the Spanish Masech. You remember such a Gishmak and Every day is a grand slam. Every day, unbelievable. It's like Jeff Razner. It's like Shaz Cotton or something. Jeff Razner, it's my Yeah. You was unbelievable. And it's my son, Yosef Simcha Chaim Ben Sor Khan Rufu Shleimah. You know, it was just Kishma because of the Abayin Nevis Amidash. This is like Sugiyas. Yesterday was Raiv. We're done with Raiv. Today is a Pesha Asar. It's like one to the next. As a schos, by the lack and love of big families, like New Jersey, because Torah is the best gula. As a schos for our children, be called safe, healthy, happy, and know Hashem loves them. Third one, Shragi Chafetz, RL 149. It's schos for my family and myself to be tzaddikim. Oh, no, sorry, and myself. And for the tzaddikim of RL Atzala. The parents of Shavuah, Akilov family, Lilu Nishmat, Elio ben Bakmal Akilov. Today's sponsor, Dov Ehrenreich, Ziva Gogum for Yitzchok Zev ben Dvoyer Esther, and Ephraim Hill ben Dvoyer Esther. And another parents of him, I should be Zoycha, uh, Nachas Dikdusho, and tremendous success in my new business because Torah is the best. Segula. Rabbi Isai, here we go. Brand new parak. We finished a parak in Tsubis. I'm sad. Go on. Daft Zayin today. Starting from the Mishnah. The official Mishnah is sponsored by Moshe Kohen for Hatzlocha with Limerat Torah and Parnasa. So we were talking about Nemonas of the husband, the wife, as they get married the first night, the second day. Now we're moving on to the next stage. Also, questions of Nemonas, who do you believe, who do you don't believe? But now we're at the, at the end of the marriage. Ho'isha shenis armala in his garsha. He marries Psula Nesosani. She got divorced. She's 90 years old. She's trying to remind her husband, by the way, when we got married 70 years ago, I was never married before. You don't remember, Shtikl. It's been a while, but you were divorced. Should I refresh your memory? So she's asking for 200. He's saying, I only owe you 100. Now, it also talks about somebody that died. Obviously, he's not talking from the grave. The children are representing him. They're fighting with their own mother. No, dad doesn't owe you 200. It's 100. Great. Now, Rashi points out, and it's very important, that there's no ksuba here. If she had a ksuba, she had a document that says, I'm a psula, like every woman that gets married has either, it says she's a psula in 200 or almana 100. It should say, she doesn't have it. So what do we do? If there are Aiden that she was wearing this Hinuma, the Gemara is going to describe what it was. And her hair is uncovered and reaches her shoulder. There's a Minug. I don't know. Let me know if you know about this Minug. I heard that there's a Sephardi Minug that they take the Kala in one of these cars and they beep the horn everywhere. Ah, the Kala is getting married today. Yeah, anybody? No? The Sephardi are shaking their heads. No. Okay, whatever. Louis said this such a minute. It's not a minute of preachers, it's a minute of the opposite of preachers. It's to, to notify people this woman is becoming a Sish, stay away. But there were minhagim that they had for women who are getting married for the first time. It's a very interesting thing. It's a sad thing a little bit. A woman who is getting married for the first time, 
gets a ksuba of 200. What about if this woman was violated when she was younger? Does she get a ksuba of 200 or 100? Anybody? 100. She's not a psula. So if a girl gets violated, 15, 16 years old, does she have to start covering her hair? From the Mishnah, it seems like she does. Because it says that any woman who I could testify and say that she had her hair uncovered when she got married, is a right that she deserves 200. But here you have a girl that doesn't get 200, she gets 100. So it would seem that she has to cover her hair. She's a ba'ula, she has to cover her hair. That's, that's what's interesting about covering hair. I think people might not realize that covering hair is not as much of a problem of a rayas that it's, it, it causes hirumor. It's just halach Sinai that a woman who is married, a ba'ula has to cover her hair. A woman that's not married doesn't cover her hair. It's not about uh, covering something that's pros or not pros. So over here also, so it's just an interesting shayla that they talk about. Could you prove from here or not? She's not married. She's a ba'ula. It's nothing to do with marriage. It has to do with a ba'ula. A woman who was married for one night and got divorced has to cover her hair. It's Allah of being a ba'ula, not, a, not married or not married. That's what I'm trying to say. It's, so if she was a ba'ula, against her will, she was violated, she's still a ba'ula and she has to cover her hair, according to those. And it seems from the Mishnah that they're right. Because if she doesn't have to cover her hair, then here you have a situation of a girl who deserves a ksuba of only a hundred, and she's bringing a riot. Look, when I got married, I had my hair uncovered, and I deserve 200. She's going to mess up her husband. The, 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 uh, he, he's finding that she was a mana. Maybe only a mana. No, a mana means uh, it's both. What do you mean? A mana and grusha. The, the mission starts. Both. Oshin is garisha. He emerged with Sulan Sasani. And a mana is a lashon of, 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 of bu'ula, of grusha. Of, it's all in one category. Says the Gemara, says the Mishnah. They used to throw dried wheat. They still have the minig now. Sometimes they, they throw wheat. There's a story with Rishmul Salan. A guy comes to Rishmul Salan and says, I want to get divorced. I married into this family, a bunch of kaifrim. I ate there at Pesach night. And in the soup, there was, there was wheat. So the so Shmuel Salant asked him, when did you get married? He said, uh, a month ago. He says, give me your strimal. Takes his strimal and goes like this. And a bunch of wheat came out because they have a minute to throw wheat. And when he bent down into the soup, it fell into the soup. <laughs> it's not a joke. It's sad. She came and said, I want to get more. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. My sister came out to you. Now listen to this. All of a sudden comes Rabbi Yeshua. Umay the Rabbi Yeshua. Nothing to do with what we're talking about. Or maybe it does have to do. The Gemara is going to talk about this. Where does this come into the Mishnah? Rabbi Yeshua says, by the way, I admit. To who do I admit? To myself? Do I admit to Rabbi Gamliel? Who was arguing last parak? He comes to the children. I was thinking about this. If my children probably don't know of half the stuff that I own. So if Ben C. Freeman comes to him and says, listen, by the way, your father owns this. It's a pesha asa peshitir. And by the way, he gave it to me as a gift. That's it. <laughs> you know, that's what it says here. If you, they don't know on their own that somebody, that their father owned it, and somebody comes along and says, by the way, your father owned it. But let me qualify what I just said. He owned it. Yes, but he sold it to me. It's a pesha asa, the mouth that introduced us to the whole idea to the game. What is the Pesha Asar? You could also explain what happened. It is a Migui. It's the same thing. It's a Migui. Pesha Asar, Pesha Asar. That's what it is. It is. It's sort of a Migui. Yeah. Yeah. Who's talking about an Isra? We're talking about a field here. Ba'oymel chaveri sadezu shalavicha oyesel gachti oymeno shuhu nemon sha Pesha Asar, Pesha Asar. You have Migui in, in, in Maminus also. Okay, so now we're talking about a Pesha Asar, Shas Katan, another Musuk. But if he's not the one that introduced the idea, because there's Eden beforehand, after Zainab and Alavantab, but he claims I took it from him. Okay, how long was he? We'll see. Says the Gemara, 
If this Adim that she went out with Hinuma and her hair was uncovered, all this, great. But like Adim, there's no Adim, Baal Then the husband's believed that he married a divorcee, an Almana, and he only owes her a hundred. I don't know if you remember, what? No, because this girl has, we learned the girl has a chazaka, cheskas kashrus. She, a girl is born a psula, so she got married a psula. Rebbe Gamliel always says, uh, in the last period, that in the case, I'll just throw it out here, hold on. What? Oh, why? Yeah, yeah. So, we discussed, and the, 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 the case is going to be, I'm going to spoil it for everybody, the famous case of Mir Shiristani Nenasti. He says, I, don't fi- I didn't find Psulam. And she says, you're right, but it, I was violated after we were engaged. So it's your field that was ruined. Rebbe Gamaliel says she's believed. Rebbe Shul says she's not believed. Who do you pass him like? Pass him like Rebbe Gamaliel, we said. How loves like Rebbe Gamaliel? She's always believed. If she, she could say, Rebbe Gamaliel says, she could say about her pregnancy, who's the father. She could say everything. She's always believed. Now, Rebbe Gamaliel says she is believed. She has a cheskas kashros. Over here it seems like she's not believed. Why? Because... It's only the, when there are Adam she's believed. Without Adam, she's not believed. Says the Gemara, the most obvious answer. The case of Mishiristani Nenasti, he has no idea, the husband, when this happened. He's throwing out a claim. I say it happened before we got engaged. She says, no, I can tell you, I know for 100%, I'm certain that it happened after we got engaged. I know who it is, I know when it happened, everything. He can't say he knows. So what is he? He's a Shema. He's a uncertain and, he, and she's certain. So Bari Vishema, Bari Adif. She's always believed against a Shema. Bari Bari, Over here in our case, she's saying, I was not divorced. And he's saying, you were 100% divorced. I know. I know why I'm married. And she says, I know I, what I was when I... They're both Baris. So therefore, he's believed, not her. She's only believed when there's Adim. They could prove that was a, a wedding for a psula, not for a bula. Says the Gemara, But what was your havamina? What were you thinking when you asked the question? Says the Gemara, beautiful. Obviously, our mission is a completely different case than Mishnah Rastani Nenasti, where the husband doesn't have a right to, to claim. He's going to claim it, but he has no proof to his claim that, that she was Nenas beforehand. Says Gemara, but over here, even the Rebbe Noshim Sulis Nisois, Kibari Vishem Adami. If you do, most women who get married, obviously, every woman who get, every woman who gets married a second time was married the first time. So all the women that got married were once married first. So most women in the world who are getting married are getting married for the very first time. Not everybody gets divorced and gets married a second time. So most women are psulis. Well, it's more more than that, psulis. So most Jewish women getting married are psulis. So now she has a much stronger taina. Now she's saying, my taina is stronger than yours. I'm saying I wasn't divorced. You, you're saying I was divorced. Okay, so it's 50-50. But guess what? Now I have a rive that adds to my taina that I wasn't divorced. Most women who get married are psulois. So now I'm much stronger than you. I'm not just a bari and a bari. I'm a super bari and you're a weak bari. Kibari v'shem adami. You turn my taina so strong now that your certain taina is like an uncertain taina. It's like a shema. Says the Gemara of Achinam Stabra Mdiktani Umoid Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua admits, right? So now let's just see this for a second. Oh, hold on. Check this out. Let's just say this about Pep. Rabbi Gamliel argues on Rabbi Yeshua. Reish Yudov is Rabbi Yeshua. He argues on Rabbi Yeshua in the case of Mishiristani and Nasti. In, in the red, the top part. Mishiristani and Nasti. It's a case of Bari Vishema. Rabbi Gamliel says she's believed. And Rabbi Yeshua says she's not believed. So they argue. Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Yeshua argue. Comes Rabbi Gamliel in our Mishnah, if that's the Pshat. If our Mishnah is Rabbi Gamliel, in the beginning we want to say it's not Rabbi Gamliel. And it's, it's a problem, because we pass it like Rabbi Gamliel. Okay, 
Let's say our mission is Rabbi Gamliel. Comes Rabbi Gamliel and, and kind of admits to Rabbi Yeshua something. He says, in a case of Bari and Bari, when they're both certain, what? Amar and she says, no, I was a psul. In that case, Rabbi Gamliel admits to Rabbi Yeshua, she's not believed, unless she has Eidah. But she's not believed. Comes Rabbi Yeshua and says, okay, thank you for admitting to me. I'm going to admit something to you. It flows well. Rabbi Gamliel always argues with Rabbi Yeshua in the first parak of Ksubis. Now, in the first Mishnah of the second parak, he says, well, there's something I want to admit to you. Comes Rabbi Yeshua and says, you know what? I'm going to admit something to you. As I'm learning this, I'm thinking that has to do with real estate a little bit. One of the, yeah, real estate is all about negotiations. And many times, at least I use this tactic, you sit there in a heavy negotiation session, and if you show a soft side to you, you're not like, this is really, mm, like, you take, you take a, you give in a little bit. Then all of a sudden, they soften up also. It's kemayim amayim, sort of. It's a, it's, a, it's a known tactic. Not that that's what they're doing, but look, you admit to me, I'm going to admit to you. So stop. To remember, it's like for Zikarian purposes. Okay. So it makes sense. It flows. Rigam Leal says, I argued heavily with you in the first parak. Now I'm going to give you something that I admit to you in the case of Bari Bari. Comes Rabbi Yeshua and says, and I'll admit to you that when somebody shows up and, and, and says, hey, this field was owned by your father, but I bought it from him. He has a migui. Migui. Okay. Why? But if this is not Rabbi Gamliel, who's the Mishnah? Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua admits to himself. Who's he talking to? It doesn't flow well. It seems like the Mishnah starts off talking about Rabbi Gamliel. And now everything goes well. Inside. It makes sense from the Lashon the Mishnah. If Rabbi Gamliel is admitting something to Rabbi Yeshua, then it makes sense that Rabbi Yeshua is admitting something back to Rabbi Gamliel. I will admit to you. But if it's not even Rabbi Gamliel, the beginning of the mission is Rabbi Shua, like we wanted to say, Rabbi Shua le Mamoida. Okay. Says the Gemara, well, so now if you just look at the chart for a second, all the Gemara is doing is Rabbi Shua on the bottom left corner is going to admit to Rabbi Gamliel on the top right corner. In other words, not so schwer. I'm going to admit, I, the beginning of the mission is me, Rabbi Shua. And I'm, I'm admitting to something we discussed in the previous parak. That's it. It goes like this here. Rabbi Shua admits, in the case of a field, that there's a migoy. The whole other parak we said no. Remember, Mishir Estani Nenasti. The guy comes and says, Hello, you don't have psulim. So what does she say? Oh, you're right, but I was violated. She could have said a much better thing. What could have she said? Mukaseitz. No, because he came up with it. He asked it. Mukas I remember when he asked it. Uh, Muka, why is she saying that Mishra is starting to ask it? She could have said a much better taina. It happened through an instrument. There was not, nothing there. And I get a bigger ksuba. So we have to believe her. She has a migui. And Rabbi Shua says, no, no migui. But in this case of a field, he admits there is a migui. You see? It, 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 goes, it puts on the other parak. That's the end of the Gemara. Mishra is starting to ask it. But, like the Gemara typically does, the style of the Gemara. And there's good reason. The Gemara is going to give us now, let's just say the words, Misar is Rabbi Shua, hi Perkin, Kai. You think Rabbi Shua in the second part of the Mishnah, he says, I'm, I agree. I'm not agreeing to this Mishnah that we're talking to now. I'm agreeing. Amigu Kai, Vaprikin Kama Kai. I'm talking about the Migui in the first paragraph of Subas. Ahaya. Which Migui? So, if you learned the first parak, I was actually on the phone with this guy, Ezra, from New York yesterday, trying to convince him. Somebody called me up. Convince him. He wants, he wants you to call him. If you call him, so I called him. So, today might be his first day. So, maybe he doesn't know what's flying. But for all of us who learned the first parak of Subas, the Gemara is going to do a beautiful Chazara, 30 line Chazara now. We, we all know the Sugis inside out, so we can move through it. The end of the story is, it's the case that we're talking about the whole time now, Mishiristani Nenasti. But the Gemara says, perhaps it's a different case. But why does the Gemara, just a little Nikuda here to point out. The Gemara, it's the style of the Gemara to go through everything until you get to the real one. It also makes more sense 
that he's arguing on the closest Mishnah to this Mishnah. I'm going to be married to the last Mishnah. Oh, not that one? Let's go to the one right before that. Not that one? And finally we get to the one on Yudbeiz and Yudbeiz, which is the furthest one away, but it makes the most sense. Because when I learned it, Mishnah Ristani and Nasti jumped into my head immediately. It was before anything. So, okay. Gemara goes through the whole um, exercise. Ilei me'aha. The famous Mishnah, they see that she's pregnant and they say, who's the father? And she says, I'm telling you, he has yichos, he's a kayin. She's believed. We don't trust her. So the Gemara says, I need a case that there's a migoy that Rabbi Yeshua argues and says, I don't trust the migoy, but in our Mishnah by a field, he does trust the migoy. That, there's no migoy in that case. Why? She's so obviously pregnant that she can't say, well, I'm not pregnant. She's stuck. Okay, another one. So this is, if you notice, it's beautiful, that pshat, because Muberis is in the same Mishnah as this, but Muberis is closer to our Mishnah. It's the end of the Mishnah. And this is the beginning of the Mishnah. She saw them talking, and we said talking to another man is nothing. It means something, it might be, it's a Lashanaki of either Mamish Bia, they saw it, they witnessed it, or they saw Yichud, but it doesn't mean Dibur. But, okay, so where's the Migoy over here? They saw her talking to somebody, who is this guy? I'm telling you, he has Yichos. She's believed, we don't trust her. What's the Migoy? If it's talking about they saw Yichud, so the Migoy is, she could say, Nothing happened there. You saw me go into a room, but nothing happened. The, the fact that she's admitting that the, the something happened, that's her migu. She could have said nothing happened. And therefore, ma'am, no. But, if there's Adim, again, there's Adim that saw Bia. <laughs> My migu, what could she say? It didn't happen. There's Adim that saw it happen. She can't deny it. So, again, we don't have a case where Rabbi, where Rabbi Shua says, there's a migui, and I, I don't trust the migui, but in this case, there's a migui, and I do trust the migui. In a case that she says that I lost my psulim from wood. That's not what happened. It happened from a man. Rabbi Shua says, I don't trust her. What's the case of a migui? If the argument is about, the husband says, I'm not going to give you anything. And she demands only a hundred because she's a mukas ace and she gets a hundred. According to that chita. But she, so she has a migo that she could have said, yes, it's wood while it's engaged. This Messiah, and therefore she gets 200. And now she's putting herself in a bad position of a hundred. So let's believe her that she gets the hundred. Because she, if she's already lying, like that guy that returned the, the wallet to the, to the parrot, if I'm stealing, I could take more. If I'm lying, I could take more. Regardless, okay. Even in that case, we have a problem according to Rabbi Yochanan, it doesn't flow well. The whole argument between the husband and the wife is whether she gets 200, like a regular psula. And the husband says, no, you're, a bu'u, you're like a bu'ula because you're a mukasei, so you only get a mana. What could if she tied it better? She's already saying, I want 200. What could she do better? Finally, here we have it over here, the two Mishnahis. The Mukasait's one is Yud Gimel, and the one that we're finally at is Yud Beis, five daf ago. Almost. He didn't find Psulim, and she claims that it happened under your watch. We were already engaged. And it's like somebody who buys a field, and it flooded afterwards. That's not what happened. Hello, actually, Again, he doesn't know for sure. He's just throwing it out there. Maybe he'll uh, catch a fish or something. He's saying. No, it happened before we got engaged. He's a shema. She's believed. So over there, she has a migui. The migui, she could say, why does she have to admit that she's a ba'ula from a man? She could have said it happened from something else. What's the difference? Because now that she admits that she was violated, now she's also to a kayan. But if she said it happened from Eight. She's not us. We call her in a nasty. The kabbalah of Shem Guna. B'shemach yigal ringim liel mehem no. So she has a good migu. We call her Yeshua. The ringim liel b'hai migu da hachem oydin alach by a field where I tell the kids. By the way, your father owned 
17 nursing homes, you don't even know about them. And, oh, but I bought them. But over there, by Mr. Astani Nenasti, I argue, that's not a good migu that you could have said, oh, it happened from eight. What? Yeah. Yeah. Says the Gemara, Mugu said. Mikhdi, but the Gemara says, okay, so explain to me why not. What is the difference? They both, they're both Migus. Mikhdi, hi Migu, hi Migu. I could say she could have said a great Taina. He caught her. She's a Bula. So she's, oh, you know what happened? Muka says, it's the best way out of it. She doesn't become possible. She, she, she doesn't ruin her reputation. Everything's great. And over here also, he has a Migui. You see? David, you call the Migui? Migui. The high Migui. And over here, it's a Migui by the field. So what's the difference between the two migos? Says Gemara, hacha, ein shor shachad lefanecha. Over here, you don't have a dead ox. There's nothing for the kids to go on. They have no reason to think the father, the father owned nursing homes. Who's letting them know about the nursing homes? This guy. Okay, so now we have to believe him for everything. But there's no reason for them to start searching. If somebody mentioned something, and there's Aiden, that they own nursing homes, you're right. But he comes to them and says, by the way, kach kach. really? Yeah, really, but I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that he sold them to me for, for a dollar. Okay, so we, we believe him. But Hasam harishor shachad Over there, by the Mishur standing in Asti, he's coming with a taina. He's telling her, hey, what happened to your psulim? So she comes up with an excuse. I lost them after we got engaged. Ah, she could have said a better taina. I lost them from Mukaseit. Maybe she didn't think about it. She was under pressure. He asked her a question. She didn't have time to think about the answer. Quick, what happened? So she could have said, maybe she didn't think about it. She wasn't smart enough. But over here, there's no shard, there's no taina, nothing. The only way you know about the real estate that he owned is from this guy. So mainly is 100% believe. But over here, the way we know about it is from the husband claiming. And she answered, that's not a good. Migu says, Rabbi Shua. Huh? You, according to Rabbi Shua, maybe. I don't know. Since we have a roiv, a roiv again. So it says in the Pasuk, Achrei Rabim Lahato. It's Doi Rai. So we always go by the majority. 51% is enough for us. We should believe this woman 100% that she was a psula. And therefore, what? Take money out of her husband with the roiv. So, yes, this is a shita. Taisha says, points out, that's Rav. Machlis Rav and Shmuel. Rav holds, I could take money out of somebody through a Rav. Shmuel argues, no, Rav is good to eat food that you think is treif, Rav, not to take money out of somebody else. Okay. Says the Gemara, okay. What's going on here is like this. We have a Rav. The majority of women who get married are psulois. Yeah? In our community, most women who get married for the first time are psulas. And in our community also, everybody knows, call. you have to look at this word, every single unmarried girl who gets married, the whole world knows about it. They know about the chasana. 300 people came, danced, halavai 300, 700, whatever it is. They came, they danced, everybody knows about the wedding. It goes, it's a whole spiel, the whole, everybody knows everything. There's a call. The zoo. It's online, and the internet, and the invitations, and the vart, and the, and the shepherd brachas, and the ufrof, and everybody knows that you got married. Not so much by a second marriage. Sometimes people get married, second marriage. Really? You got married? Yeah, last week. But you just got divorced a week and a half ago. Nachon, yeah, yeah. The zoo, what? It happened in our community right here, right? The guy got divorced, boom, uh, two weeks later. I'm not, okay, whatever. So this woman who doesn't have the coil, something really serious happened over here. 
it ruined the fact, because every girl that gets married is a call. And she doesn't have a call, she's not part of everything. So it ruined her roiv, the roiv that says that all women, or most women who get married are basulas. It says the Gemara, e call. If you're going to be medayig on the word call, and tell me every single girl that gets married is a call. Hanisa basuli yesh call. He also aid them, I have it. Then how could aid them fight against this rule? There's a rule. Every, 100, not 99%, 100% of girls who get married, when the psula is, they, everybody knows about it. So how could two of them fight against such a rule? We know she what? You're fighting against a rule that says call. Says Gemara, don't, don't take it literally. It's not everyone. It's a roi, with 51%, the 60, 70%, Rubik Akula, whatever. But there's a... You have to take the word call and switch it. That's what we meant. We weren't being serious about the call. Roiv, it means roiv. Roiv, and he says, Psula is the call. Yeah, uh, even today. If somebody got married, let's say, during COVID, maybe we didn't hear about it. There's only 15 people at the wedding, and it's possible a wedding happened, we don't even know about it. So it's not every single Psula that got married. Most. Okay, so that's, uh, we just took back, we just went from, what? That's why you need Adam. That's why Adam work over here. Because Adam cannot work against a solid rule of call. Adam can work against a roiv. You tell me most girls who get married are psulois, well, I have Adam say that she's not. I have Adam say that she's not. Okay, so real quick, Agdama. There's a machloikis in Baba Basra, sponsored by Moshe Horn. Is the other, is the third sponsor for real? I didn't put it in, sorry. Uh, in honor of Rebbe, Tzvi Medetsky, the only Rebbe that was actually good at basketball, and Yanko Cohen, the official MDY, MSP. In honor of Rebbe Eli, the real greatest Jewish basketball player who ever lived. Okay, Vivaldi. Vaishmi. That's like LaRoche. Fine. This is very interesting machlaikis. What happens if I, somebody lends money to somebody else? Ruvain lends to Shimon. I lend to you money. And you come to pay back. And you say, well, I'll give you the $10,000 back, but you have to give me back the star. I need, I need evidence that I pay. And what am I going to do when I have the star? I'll tear it up. I'll burn it. And then you won't be able to come back to me and say, yeah, I owe you $10,000. Makes sense. You come to me and I say, you know what? I'm sorry. I lost the star. So there's a mandama that says, too bad, you lost the shadar, you can't do anything about it. But I'll write your receipt. No. He doesn't want a receipt, because then he has to hold on to the receipt for 100 years. You'll, his yisoyimim will find a shtar somewhere in a drawer. And say, oh, the guy owes 10,000. They go to the other guy, 55 years later, and they, don't, they, can, they can't produce a receipt, and you're going to take money out of them. No, you come up with a shtar, he pays you, you give him a shtar. You don't give him a shtar, you don't get paid. End the story, there's such a shita. Others say, no. He, he lost his shtar. Have rahmanas on him. He'll write you a receipt like everybody else does. Okay, can we prove something from our Mishnah? Because we said in our Mishnah, she doesn't have a ksuba. She doesn't have a ksuba, that's a shtar. Now she's coming and she's saying, hello, you owe me 200. So you could say, too bad. Produce a ksuba. You don't have a ksuba, I'm not paying you. She'll say, well, give me, I'll, I'll give you a receipt. Well, I don't want a receipt. Then you're going to come back in five years and say, pay me again. I don't want to receive. I want, it. I want a ksuba. But over here, you see from our Mishnah, she doesn't need a ksuba. Receipt is good enough. Huh? 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 Maybe not. Maybe I paid it. I paid it. I paid it. I'm not giving you a dime. What do you mean? And a guy that comes to $10,000, a guy that comes for $10,000, go back, a guy that comes to $10,000, $5,000 he owes him a money shop. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a alva. I, not alva, I owe you money, I owe you money, produce, a, produce documents. I don't see, I don't see the difference between, you know, Noam is saying that because she's 100%, at least, a Baula, an Almana, so give her 100. But he could say, I paid already yesterday. And I gave you a receipt, I don't want a receipt. I don't, I don't think you're right. Oh, somebody sent me, by the way. I have to, somebody sent me the Pisgit Shuvah that I was looking for. There is a Pisgit Shuvah with the Basar. It was very, remember yesterday? Pisgit Shuvah says that if you find a piece of meat on the street and, and you want to be a big machmer, you're like happy or something. He sent it to me. He found it in a different place. Okay. Oh, sorry. 
If she doesn't have a ksuba, so she's going to come with two aid into this bezdin. Well, the mapkil will ksuba by bezdin, and she'll go to, to another city and say he has to pay me vigavi ba, and she uses the same aidim again. Or mavoz isimeres kaisin shayver. You see that a receipt does work. She, he can't push her off and say I'm not giving you ksuba until you give me the actual ksuba. Says Rapapa, Rapapa Omar, No, there's there are places that they don't write a ksuba at all. And therefore, if she doesn't have a ksuba, she won't be able to demand payment twice. So what's the obvious question? But how is she demanding payment now? She has Aiden. She'll do the same. Okay, the Gemara will, will address it. Now, just pay attention here. On our Mishnah, that the Mishnah says that she could demand a ksuba with Aiden, says Rav Papa, it's a place that there's no Aiden. Now the Gemara says, well, maybe this wasn't even said about the Mishnah. It was said about something else, something similar. And the Gemara is going to say, well, it, it's a big enough Gemina because just because Rav Papa said it on the Brisa, then okay, he'll say it also on the Mishnah. But just because he said it on the Mishnah doesn't mean he said it on the Brisa. Okay, what's the difference between the Brisa and the Mishnah? Rav Papa, Here, uh, oh, what happened over there? Ibdok Subasa, Hitmina and Nisrifa. So we have three things in this Brisa. One, two, and three. Ibdok Subasa, I lost my Ksuba. Hitmina Subasa, she hid it somewhere. Nisrifa Ksubasa, it got burned completely. Big difference. One is that it's in the world. I don't know where in the world it is. The other one is it's burnt. It's out of this world. Rok Dulafonel, if she could produce Aden, that they danced in front of her like they danced for a psula. Sahak Gulafonel, they did some shtick. Hevir Lafonel Koshul Psari, the Gemara is going to explain some sort of wine that proves that she's a psula. Oy Mapa Shul Psulim, or a sheet, the, the psulim sheet. In the beginning, I thought that's the minic today that, I don't know if you ever had a wedding, the guy goes with like a sheath and the other guy goes like a bull. You ever, you ever see the shtick? Yeah. I saw a better picture. Check out this picture. That I thought maybe this is where this minic comes from. This might be the, the Mapashal Psulim thing. No, it's a record. Now, people ask me, somebody sent me an email today. What's going on here with this? What? I know. I get it. Ah, really? I didn't even know. This is, right, this is where we learn in the Kailo, that's his father. Larry Flintstein's father. Wow. Wow. Found it online. That's his son. That's not Rabbi Fl- Oh, that's Rabbi Flintstein's son. That's his father. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. You thought I... Not. But, okay, enough of this picture. But somebody just sent me an email today. Like we said, there's a whole suuda for Basulim and, and this. And like, how is it possible? Like we're so mocked in how we talk and... Uh, even have 70 years of this but you see from the sugya they were very into that and they were very into promoting the idea of psulim and, and, and that the, 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 this woman was not nikshal when she was uh, a pnuya there, there was a thing the whole, the, the, this is the whole sugya okay so it says like this uh, that she, there was a dancing and this subasam sign she gets 200 Ask the Gemara, this is the same sugi that we said a second ago, but this is on the Brisa. Let's be concerned that these Edim are going to help her and, and take money from the husband in different cities. Because there's no, there's no, there's no receipt here. From here you see the idea that she could demand that I will give you a receipt even though I don't have a Ksuba. On this, Rav Papa said, the same thing that like we said a second ago, we're talking about a city that doesn't, they don't ride a ksuba. Just real quickly, Tosis points out here, then why are we talking about a city that they didn't ride a ksuba? Hold on. Um, we have to say the next word. It says the ksuba got lost. What are you telling me that this is in a, it's in a city that they don't ride a ksuba? She had a ksuba. How did she have a ksuba if they didn't write one? The cost of Lo'iu, you're right, it's in the city they don't write, but he wrote one for her. So he says a beautiful point here that, so just say it's in a city that they, everybody writes. It, it, what's the difference? In a city that they don't write, but he wrote. Or it's in a city that they do write. Isn't that the same thing? So he says, no. In a city that they do write Aksuba, then you cannot live with your wife without Aksuba. So now we have to be concerned that perhaps he wrote another Aksuba for her and she has a second one hiding somewhere. But not in this case. Okay. Nice cha. So, problem number one is, it says that 
in, in this chart, Ibda in green, she lost her ksuba. That means they wrote a ksuba. Okay, fine. He wrote it for her on the side. Soif, soif, mapkulov, gaviyabah. But if, he, if she lost it, it happened to me here in Eretz Yisrael. I, I had something that I didn't really want to use. So I got a chair and I put it on the top shelf in my, in my closet. And when I put it there, I felt something. So I, it was like $4,000 that I put there like three years before. I just forgot. I like kind of hit it, threw it up there. Happened to my uncle. He was trying to fix his sewer in his house. He opened up the, the cap, you know, in the shower. And it, it, all of a sudden he found a bag of money that he himself put there 10 years earlier, whatever. The, you know, devalued shkalim. Happens. So she lost her ksuba, Shalom Aleichem. 10 years later, she's going like this on the top shelf and she finds her ksuba. Now she's going to use it against her husband. Uh, where am I think? Oh, here. I need this thing. It must mean that it got lost in a fire. <laughs> but how could number one mean that it got lost in fire? So what's number three? Three means also lost in a fire. But what about number two over here? She, she, she hit it. Ibda means it got lost. Titmino means she hit it. Which, which one is it? That one she'll, she will produce. It didn't get burned. Vesu ibda lamali. Ela kol ibda kitmino b'fanenu lamali. So now the Gemara is saying a tchak, a big tchak. And the Gemara admits that it's, uh, it's, it's pushing the envelope here. We're going to say that one and two is actually one thing. That if it got lost to the, if it got lost, it's like she hit it. And what's that lacha if she hit it? In parentheses, she cannot get a ksuba. If it's in this world, she doesn't get ksuba. Now we're saying another halacha, nisrafa. doesn't say anywhere in the b'risa that they're different. It says, ibda itmina nisrafa. We're saying such a tchak now, that ibda equals itmina. It's one thing. Nu halacha, period. Nu halacha, if it got burnt and it's out of this world, the b'risa admits, now she could get a ksuba of 200. Because when we have no concern, she's going to come and be goiva. If it's out of this world, says Gemara, if so, man the masla brisa. If you tell me that Rav said this shot on the brisa, kolchke and amasnisa. Now in the brisa where it says mufurish that she has a ksuba, it says ibda. There was a ksuba, great. And the the mission doesn't talk about that at all. So certainly, we would say his pshat in the Mishnah. Because it doesn't, it doesn't go well. This is such a big tchak that we, we're not going to say this pshat in the b'raisa. So we said a second ago, the Rapapa says, if there's Edim that she went out with a imuno, whatever, what is it called? The imuno, imuno. Here says, we believe that. Here it is, the word. But how does it work? Okay, we're talking about in a city that they don't write a ksuba. If there's Aidim, that she, she got married and so she's a psula, she does get a ksuba. But now the same concern, she'll use the same Aidim somewhere else and be going again. Of course. If there's no ksuba, and the only way she's going to demand a ksuba, and by the way, why is she going to demand a ksuba? Because it's takonis bezdin. You don't need a ksuba. Chacham said, everybody that gets married gets 200. I don't care if you write a document down. But at least if you're going to come and demand payment, for that everybody agrees that there's a receipt. Let's just do a little bit more, a little bit more. My koshal psoira, what is this cup that we're talking about that proves that she's a psula? Here's the chart of Truma. The first thing that you ever take from your produce is about 2% and you give to the Kayin. So they take some of the wine that you give to the Kayin and you kloimar to say. It's like a, a simon. She could have got married to a Kayin and she could have eaten Truma because she's a psula. The only Almana that can't marry a Kayin is a Kayin Gadol. But every Almana can marry a Kayin. A divorcee can't marry a Kayin. But Almana could. So what kind of proof is that? My papa is This is the first. The first thing you take. You see the list? First you take 2% and you give to the client. Then you take 10% and you give to the lady. Then the lady takes this number. Then you take 10% for yourself. This is the first. Hold on. One more line. 
They used to put a barrel right in front of her. They give a barrel that's closed. That she has a Pesach Sosom. She's a Beula. So that guy's going to ask, how does the Zayar say? That they used to make such a Suda? Here, how do they, they, they put such a, a barrel? That's what they used to do. Am I never kami psulo, the kami bulo, never klal? Why do they have to do Just do one barrel. Why do they have to embarrass the woman that was married before and say, look, she has a pezel besuach, here the barrel is open. Don't put a barrel at all. That will be your simon. One chasana has a barrel, one doesn't. It says the Gemara is in the Tufts of Messiah. Very interesting. She'll grab out of the state her whole ksuba. Now you have to prove that she took for, wrongly. Says Rashi, there was shikr at the wedding. They forgot to bring a barrel. So Mamela, every wedding gets a barrel. One is open, one is closed. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful Shabbos. Shir Mazi Shabbos. 10.45. Sharp. Sharp, very sharp.